Israel says it's targeting terrorists in the West Bank. Soldiers raided the city of Nablus. At least three people were injured after police used rubber-coated bullets against rock-throwing residents. 30 people are reported to have been arrested. 50,000 living in the old city have been told to stay indoors. Well, we'll be getting reaction from Israeli and Palestinian officials in a moment. But first, from Nablus, Al Jazeera's David Chater reports. Hundreds of Israeli soldiers have sealed off the old city inside Nablus and are conducting house-to-house -house searches. At least 50,000 people are now under curfew in an operation the Israeli army described as acting against terror infrastructures. They claim to have discovered eight terror laboratories in the city so far this year. Local radio station broadcasts were broken into by the Israelis who announced the names of the men on their wanted list, believed to be members of Islamic Jihad. A suicide bomber from the organization was picked up by the Israeli security forces south of Tel Aviv last week. The Israeli army described Nablus as the capital city of terrorism in the West Bank at the moment continuing to try and send suicide bombers into Israel. Units from the army have sealed off the city's main hospital. Schools and universities have been shut down. The Israelis say no time limit has been set. The activity will only end when its objectives are achieved. For more on this, I'm now joined by Miri Eisen, senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister. Uh, Ms Eisen, can you tell us why you've taken this action now, what you're hoping to achieve? Israel is constantly trying to stop the terrorism, and at this stage, Nablus is sort of like the capital of terror. It's a terror hub. It's where experts come and make bombs. It's where you have labs where you make those bombs. Not everybody in Nablus is a terrorist, and we're very aware of that. But what they do is they hide in the midst of the civilians. The only way to get to them is to go into the houses to get there and to find them. We would be very happy if the Palestinians themselves would expel these terror elements, but until they do so, there is no way out. Israel will do it on its own. How long will you stay there for? We don't know and we haven't put a time limit on it. We hope that we'll be able to find the different labs, to find the people who are on the wanted list. These are terrorists who have both carried out attacks. These are bomb experts who make those suicide bombs that explode both in Israel and in the West Bank. For as long as it takes, we'll go in. We'll try to stop as soon as we can. We have no interest in punishing the Palestinian people. The Palestinian people need to have an alleviation of their troubles, but we cannot stop to fight against terror. When the terror attacks happen, they are bad not only for the Israelis, they're also bad for the Palestinians. Now, you've put 50,000 people under curfew. I'm sure the majority of them are not involved. Are you not concerned that this might lead to some sort of backlash against you? I am sure that we are very concerned, but we're more concerned about the fact that the people of Nablus live, and at the heart of Nablus, you have a terror hub. And I would ask that question, how do you stop the terrorists from being in the midst and in the heart of the civilian population? How do you make sure that they don't live in the heart there? Where do you make these bombs in the heart of the civilian population? The terrorists themselves are holding these people hostages in the middle of their cities. The Palestinians are saying that this action is putting a strain on any future peace talks with Israel. What is your response to that? Israel has stated clearly that we're willing to talk with anybody within the Palestinian community that upholds the international community's principles. And first and foremost on that one is fighting against terror. Fighting against terror, sadly, is not with words. Fighting against terror is those soldiers that you see going in, trying to find those labs, trying to make sure that innocent people don't explode, not in Nablus, not in Israel, not anywhere else. Where does this leave a ceasefire in the West Bank, something the Palestinians want? The Palestinians would like that and so would the Israelis, but there is not a ceasefire now in the West Bank. The Palestinian president, when he committed to a ceasefire in November, committed to one from the Gaza Strip. 
I would ask, where is the ceasefire in the Gaza Strip? Daily rockets that are fired into Israel, smuggling of weapons into the Gaza Strip, sing digging tunnels into Israel also. But there is no ceasefire in the West Bank. Israel does the utmost to try to alleviate the suffering, to try to improve the quality of life for those Palestinians. But we will continue to fight against the terrorists, the same kind who just last week managed to infiltrate into Israel. And just because of the security operation, we managed to stop it before such a suicide bomber exploded. Okay, Mary Eisen, senior advisor to the Israeli prime minister, thank you very much for coming in and talking to us. Let's get a Palestinian reaction to that now. We can uh, join Ghazi Hamad. He's the spokesperson for the Palestinian government. Thanks for joining us. I wonder if you heard Miri Eisen uh, there saying that basically Annapolis is a hub for terrorism and uh, the Palestinians have themselves failed to clamp down on it. How do you respond to that? I think it is a joke, it is a big lie, because it is not only Nablus, because all the time they are talking about the whole Palestinian people are massive terror. They're not, it's, not, it's not only Nablus or Bethlehem or Calcilia. They said Gaza Strip is a focus of terror, and the Bethlehem and Tul Karim and Calcilia and everywhere. So I think this is a big lie that Israel all the time they are sleeping and waking up for the security and for hallucination of security and they want to punish all the Palestinian people because of these big lies. And then you know that they spent more than 60 years and they are punishing people, they're killing and assassinating people, demolishing homes and destroying homes. And still till now they say that Gaza is and the Nablus and West Bank is a terror area. I think the main problem is that there is occupation. Occupation means terror. That if the occupation is over, after that we can talk about peace, we can talk about stability, about security. But if there is occupation in every corner, in every centimeter, what do you expect from people? This is not the first trade, it's not the first campaign against our people. We should put in for the occupation. After that you can talk about prosperity or security. Okay, the, but the Israelis, the Israelis they believe... The, sorry to interrupt you. The Israelis would argue that they've uncovered bomb-making factories and say that... <laughs> You're obliged under international agreements such as the roadmap to uh, dismantle such infrastructure. How do you respond to that? Are you failing to do your job? Look, uh, if you look to Gaza, we, we made here a ceasefire and agreement, and we are committed to this. And we stop all the firing missiles from Gaza. But we ask at that time that Israel also should stop their aggression against our people. But they continue. They kill people in the first day that we signed the agreements for the ceasefire in Gaza. And daily there is aggression and killing and assassination, murdering people in the whole areas of the West Bank. We are one people, we are one nation. It is difficult now to make separation between West Bank and Gaza. So I think if uh, Israel think that by military means they can uh, defeat us, they can break our will or break our determination, I think they are living in a stray. They will not achieve anything. They will not achieve security. They should believe that this is a political issue. They should believe that they should put in for the occupation. And after that, they can talk about, uh, as I just said, about uh, security. But uh, it is our right for our people. Okay, Mr. It Hammond, is our right to struggle against the occupation. You're part of the attempt to put together a national unity government. How will the trouble in Nablus impact that effort, the effort to put together a government on the basis of recognizing previous peace deals with Israel while uh, Israeli incursions are uh, underway? Look, from the first moment uh, of the declaration of Mecca agreement and the starting form of the national unity government, Israel became unsatisfied. And they are trying all the time to incite uh, people, the international community, against us, against this government, against the agreement. And I think now the military escalation is coming in the, the same reason to disturb all our effort and to disturb the effort of the president and all Palestinian faction to achieve a compromise about the national unity government because they don't want the Palestinians to see the Palestinians are successful and they are progressing and they are forming and they are unified under one umbrella in one political uh, program because this will may bring Israel to negotiation table and they will push him now to talk about the political solution. And I think now Israel is not ready because they want to continue building the wall and building the settlements and to exert the pressure on the Palestinians to give more pressure and more concessions. So I think they will try now to disturb 
and to put us obstacles in our way. But okay. I, I, I'm speaking frankly, we are going as a Palestina people to form this government and to continue until we are ch uh, achieve our national rights. Palestinian government spokesperson Ghazi Hamad, thank you for joining us.